Hi there. So today let's talk about Congo and the history of Congo and why so many people keep dying in Congo because of lies, mostly from Rwanda. Yes, I've said that. Now, before I even say what is happening to the M23 right now, is that uh, maybe let me give you a snippet. So M23 rolled up into this town called Rubaya. That's why you find most Colton. And they made le- literal resistance when they came there. And after that, they established themselves there, started now shipping out minerals through Mas- this, re- this road to Masisi and all the way to Uganda, then back to Rwanda. That's what they were doing. But then, last week, they started getting their own medicine. Ambushes after ambushes. They are convoy of land cruisers, beautiful new land cruisers they've gotten from Uganda and Rwanda, was hit many times in the last week by the Wazarendo, which is the self-defense groups there. And they are literally getting hammered. Today, right now, they are kind of pulling back. They've lost so much territory in the last one week. And that is a story you're not hearing because mostly Congo has stopped telling people what they are doing. They've decided action speaks louder than words. So Congo is not publishing this anymore. They are now doing the real work. And that's how it works. When you see a war gets to a point where it's too quiet, you're not getting news from the front line, just know there's some serious work happening. And that's what is happening. Now, let's go to the reason why I'm making this video. The one thing I hate is lies. And especially a group of people who want to steal the history of another group through lies, through, you know, all sorts of lies, right? And that's why this video is here. I'm trying to tell you this. Now, I keep getting these messages, probably from Tutsi people. And I don't hate Tutsi people. What I hate is their lies. So they come to the inbox. Sometimes they tweet me directly. Other times they go to the Instagram. They have all funny documents that don't have even his- historical background. Lying and lying, justifying why I should stop making videos, exposing their government and exposing Rwanda and, and so on and so on. And I'm not here to impress anyone. I make this video to tell the truth. If you believe it, that's up to you. If you don't believe it, again, that's up to you. Right? Now, one of the tweets I got today is from a guy. I don't know his name, but he looks like he's from Kigali. Now, he comes here and tells me the leader or the spokesperson of M23 was born in 1973 in a Tutsi community in Masisi. But he grew up in the northern Buito part of Ruchuru. Now, notice Buito. Buito is a territory of the Hunde people. They even have their king there. It's a, a, In Congo, they call them chieftains, but it's like a kingdom. The king is called Umami, which is the name, f- a word from the Hutu language called a king or a supreme chief, Umami. If you come to the cousins of the Hutu called the Luyas in Kenya, they call a king or a chief Umuami. So it's a common word among Bantu people. Now, so Buito have a, a, Ruchuru is the center of the Buito chieftaincy, and they have these cousins of the Hutu called Bahunde. They speak a language similar to the Hutu. If you ask a Muhunde to speak and a Hutu, they'll chat and laugh as if they are brothers. Because that's what they are. Now, last we, last year, no, the year before that, you remember M23 went to this territory called Uchuru. There's a village called Kishishe. And they killed more than 400 Bahunde people, accusing them of working with the Hutus. So M23 has shown that they are not in Congo for so many other th- things, uh, but they are there to get minerals for Paul Kagame, and they are also there to kill the Hutus so that they can start try to steal the, the history and the lands that the Hutus occupy. Now, he goes ahead to tell me that, that this guy of M23 is a Congolese who was born in Masisi, but he, le- he lived inside the, the Bahunde territory. Now, I told him, no one denies that. The problem is that back in 1998, together with other Tutsi mercenaries who are fighting for Kagame, they crossed the border and 
into Congo, that is, and began killing Congolese Bantus in Masisi. They killed Bahunde people, the same way they killed those ones in Kishishe. They killed Hutus, Congolese Hutus. Notice. And then the president of Congo at the time in 2000, and in 2000 uh, that is Lowland Kabila, visited this territory and the people there were crying and they gave him evidence, photo evidence, narration of what the, these Rwandan backed Tutsis of Congo were doing to them. And he immediately started supplying guns to these Bantu communities near the border of Rwanda and told them to try to defend themselves because Congo was still a mess and the army could not be able to come and deploy there. They were still trying to stabilize the country. And that is what led to the Second Congo War because Rwanda felt that arming these Bantus, which Rwanda was killing, they had a license to kill without any opposition, was a threat to Rwanda. And these, rebel, these Bantu communities, ba, ba, Wabembe, Bahunde, the, the Hutus of Congo, they formed a group called the Mai Mai. And the Mai Mai was made up of so many groups. Among them was even the FDRR, which made, was made up of the Hutus who ran away from Rwanda. But there also Hutus of Congo had their own group called Nyatura. Then in the south, we had the Wabembe group of Mai Mai and so on and so on. There was Padeko in the north. There was Kodeko in the far north. There, there were all group of Bantus coming together to defend themselves against a Tutsi community that was targeting Bantus to move them away from their land. And eventually, it reached a point in 2004, the Mai Mai's numbered more than 40,000. And they kicked out the Rwandans. So the Rwandan troops were inside Congo at the time, stealing minerals. They went back to Rwanda. And then after that, these Bantus started retaliating and doing revenge attacks because they had been attacked before. So that's what it led to all the Tutsis in North Kivu and some in the South Kivu near Bukavu running to Rwanda to look to seek protection. And they were telling Paul Kagame at the time, you came to our lands saying that you are a Tutsi, but you provoked a beehive in our lands and you've left us exposed. Now the people you attacked, the Bantus you provoked are now having the same guns you came with they are killing us. So he didn't know what to do. He just put a refugee camp in Rwanda and today there are more than 74,000. Others, they've been relocated to the other countries, to Canada, all over the place. Those are the ones on social media trying to lie because now they can speak English and they can use internet in Canada and Belgium and Australia. But back to the story. So I try to tell him that he doesn't understand because he has been conditioned to believe in lies now another story i saw this is one of the most prolific prolific blogger of rwanda the rwandan blogger his name is albert rudasimbo you can go to his tweet he's so prolific he does 10 tweets in a minute he does more tweets than you can read in the same time so probably the account is managed by more people multiple account more people tweeting on the same account you can do it they are that uh, social media platform that can allow you to attach the same account and then 10 people are running the same account. I, I suspect that is what happens here because he tweets more than you can read. It's not possible, man. Anyway, he calls himself a journalist and blah, blah, blah. Now, he wrote in French and I want to read it in the trans translated version. He says, the international community continues to turn a blind eye and yet the beast is real and very there. So, if you go to his tweet last week, he was talking about how M23 are heroes and how Congo is going to fall. Today, he's now complaining. Do you know why? Because the M23 are getting hammered. When they are hammered and they start f f losing members, they are, their bloggers change the tune on the tweet. They stop celebrating. They stop insulting Congo. They start acting victim and crying and saying, where is the international community? Why are you not seeing what is happening to us? So there, there are those kind of people. Smiling one minute because they, are, they think they have a, 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 a leverage. But when they are beaten and hammered, they start crying and calling for the United States and France to come and see. To see what? 
The same country never came to see when you are the ones attacking people. But now when you are being attacked, you are saying that they can't, they should come and see. See what? So anyway, so he goes ahead to say in the video below is a Nyatura. Now I told you Nyatura are Congolese Hutus. They are located between North and South Kivu. So they are there. There are so many there. They've been there. They were attacked by the Tutsis from Rwanda and the Tutsis from Congo who had Rwandan guns in 1998. And later on, they became the Mai Mai and retaliated. From that time, they've never released their guns because the threat is there across the border. Now, he says in the video of Nyatura, and then he goes ahead to say Eftarar militia. Who told him those are Nyatura and Eftarar? Those are just Nyatura. Don't keep always trying to say that if there are, they, they try to bring if there are into the mix of everything about Congo and everything that involves Congolese Hutus defending themselves. They always make them look like those Congolese Hutus were in Rwanda to kill people. They've never even gone to Rwanda. And it is Rwanda that is coming to Congo. Anyway, the story goes on. It says, in accelerated military training, Mr. Sukisa Ndayambaje is present with them to encourage them in their commitment. Does it does it matter? Diambaje is their leader. So he's encouraging these young men to defend their lands. They are not going to Rwanda. They are there where they were born. And where their fathers were born. And where their great great grandfathers were born. You are the one who is coming there. And you are complaining that they are being trained to defend their lands. What's wrong with you? Should we complain that Ukrainians are getting trained to defend their lands? We shouldn't. So, and that's the problem with Rwandans and these Tutsis from Rwanda. They don't get it. Now, he goes ahead to say that their target is the M23. Of course, that is the threat. And on the other hand, they have no practice of ethnic, they have no practice of ethnic or regional distinctions. So they say he's trying to say that once this Nyatura move up, they don't know the difference between uh, M23 Tutsi and another Tutsi. That's that's likely. That's likely. And that's why M23 should stop doing what they are doing because once these communities in Congo start looking for Tutsis, it's, not, it's hard to tell someone is M23 and the other one is not because even an M23 can remove the military uniform they get from Rwanda and the, the, the next minute he's, he looks like a civilian. How can you tell that the same guy was the same one who was shooting you on top of the hill with green combat uniform? You can't tell. So it is hard. It's very hard. The same thing if Ukrainians were to capture five men walking with gym clothes or track suit and they are Russians in a war zone. Do you think they would think that these are just civilian Russians passing by? No, these are soldiers who have removed their uniform to try to blend in as civilians. They are not, you understand. So it's the same thing. Now, let's continue. Uh, the thing I noticed here. And I want you to take note. He's trying to say Nyatura is of Congolese by Nyarwanda. And then he goes ahead to say called Hutu. And he puts it in question mark. Now that's why I'm making this video. These Tutsis are the biggest liars that I don't want to tolerate. If you stop lying, I will stop making videos against you. It's as simple as that. Now, the reason why I'm having an issue with this I'm going to go to the word Rwanda, the origin, the etymology of Rwanda. The word Rwanda came or entered the books into a German explorer or government uh, administrator's journal. When they were exploring those lands, when Germany had captured Tanganyika, which is the current Tanzania. So they tried to go to the farthest end of Tanzania, following Lake Tanganyika, and ended up in the current territory of where Burundi is and Rwanda is. Now, inside Rwanda, they found so many communities minding their own business. These were Hutus. And as they were moving north with their Arab and Swahili coastal guides, they came across a certain smaller kingdom where there was a chief seated down and he had some kind of servants serving him milk. And they thought maybe this is the ruler of this part. So they wanted a pact with him to tell him and introduce themselves to him and say that they are Germans. So using inter translation and interpretation from 
the guides that they had come with. They told him that these are they are Germans and they want to rule this part. And what can they do to f- with him so that they can partner? And they would ask him to rule there in their in their stead. And in exchange, they would give him protection like guns and train some few of his troops or s- guards to use modern rifles. And then he told them he, one thing he has always wanted is Kwanda. Kwanda is a common Bantu word meaning to expand. So he said because he is ruling several huts and several villages, if this white man can help him capture more land for his cows. And he used the word, I won't want to rule Kwanda. And the, 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 the German explorer wrote in his book that this man's requirement or request is that he want Rwanda. And that's how the word Rwanda came into the books. And the king was a king of Tutsi. He was he had a smaller kingdom in a place called Muhazi. Muhazi is a lake in the middle of Rwanda. Let me go to Google Earth and try to go to Rwanda and see whether I can find that part. Uh, Muhazi is a smaller lake in the middle of Rwanda. And he 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 had a smaller kingdom there. I'm trying to see where I can find Muhazi. Right? should be a lake in the middle of this round. I think it's the lake here. So then they named the name, right? They named the region after him. They decided that this the whole territory of the Hutus should be called Rwanda. So now you have to understand, there was no Rwanda before the Germans came and Rwanda never meant anything, on, only that it meant to expand. So it is the etymology of the word Rwanda from the Hutu word Kwanda, which means spread or expand. Now, I said a king, a king, a Tutsi king. So the question should be, then why was the Tutsi king speaking Kihutu? It's simple. Uh, I, I'm going to get f- uh, one of these archives. So the Tutsi people, according to them, they came from northwest ethiopia some of them say they came from northeast ethiopia they even claim that the current tigre and tigrinya people are their cousins sometimes when i look at the tigre people and the tigrinya i want to believe that because they have this some kind of semblance they also like fighting that, that's what they keep doing in ethiopia so they claim they came from there they moved south they came to eastern congo they left their cousin could the the hema people or the bahema the bahima people then they kept moving south along the this uh, rift valley that's where you find these lakes this the western rift valley arm then they some of them entered uganda to settle this in this part of barara others entered entered rwanda through this part called uh, mutara Mutara is a region near Uganda in Rwanda. So that's how they came to Rwanda. Others came, kept going south and found themselves in Burundi. So that's how they came. But there were so few. When they came, they found the Hutus here. And because there were few and they wanted to coexist with the Hutus, they decided that to allow a bit of intermarriage so that the Hutus can stop being aggressive against these newcomers. And after that, they assimilated the Hutu language. They learned it because they knew, being few, they could not teach the Hutus their own language. So instead, they decided to learn the Hutu language. And that's how they ended up speaking the language of the Hutus. And that's what this archive is saying, that most Tutsi speak a Bantu-based language called Kinyarwanda in Rwanda and Kirundi in Burundi. But this is not the Tutsi's native language or native tongue. Kinyarwanda is the Hutu language, and it was adopted by the Tutsi as they settled into the Hutu lands. So, now, what they, what they did, they assimilated the language. And the language is Kihutu. It's not Kinyarwanda or Kirundi or Kikongo. It's Kihutu. It's Kihutu because the people who are speaking it are Hutus. And if you look at the rest of Africa... The Maasai speak Kimasai. The Wanyamwezi they speak Kinyamwezi. The the the, Bahe, the Bahunde they speak Kihunde, which is similar to Kihutu a little bit. 
The Bakongo they speak Kikongo. Right? The Walingara they speak Kilingara. The Baganda they speak Luganda. So, but when you come here, and that's where the lie starts, the Bahutu, they speak Kinyarwanda. What is Kinyarwanda? It's obviously and automatically that Bahutu speak Kihutu. So the language that is spoken in Kirundi and Rwanda and the whole of Kivu is Kihutu. Not the whole of Kivu, but part of Kivu, but it's Kihutu. Now, you look at the census. Uganda, Burundi has a census of about 12 million people, according to their stat statistics, and 90% of that are Hutus. So definitely, then we can say 9 to 10 million Burundians are Hutus. You go to Rwanda, they said currently that they have a population of 13 million, out of which 11 are Hutus. The census was released in October 23rd last year. You can go and Google. So 11 million Hutus in Rwanda, 11 million Hutus in Burundi. If you do that probability, then the whole of northern South Kivu has another similar number. Because these borders here were drawn up in, in, in Europe. They, they split these people. But definitely this territory has 11 million Hutus. If you lose, use that probability. Even if there were not 11 million, a number that is closer to that. It could even be 20. So, Congo has Hutus. Not few Hutus. Not Hutus who crossed over from Rwanda. And not Hutus who came from Burundi. No. Hutus who have always been there. As a matter of fact, the Hutus of Burundi... Rwanda and Tanzania, before they came to Rwanda and Tanzania, and Uganda has about 5 million Hutus, they had crossed from Congo. So where they came is where the majority are. That's, that's, how, it, that's how it makes sense to me. So this territory has crossed to 30, 30 even 40 million Hutus. In Congo, because of uh, government, they could be having other names. They may not call them Hutus. Maybe they call them Bahunde. Maybe they call them whatever name they are giving them. They are Hutus. Now, a Hutu in Congo is not a Munyarwanda. Same way, a Hutu in Burundi is not a Munyarwanda. The same way, a Hutu in Tanzania, who, who they call the Baha, five, six million of them, is not a Munyarwanda. So if you come to Tanzania here in uh, Kigoma and you find a Moha speaking Kihutu because that's what they speak, are you going to say, wow, this is a Munyarwanda? He's speaking Kinyarwanda. No, that is a Moha. He's, he's speaking Kihutu, but he's a Moha. If you come to Congo now, you find groups of people joining a group called Nyatura, a rebel group or self defense rebel group. They speak in Kihutu. Are you saying that those are Congolese Banyarwanda? No, no, no. And that's why I was having issues with these Rwandans always thinking that because a language in a certain territory sounds like the language they, as, as, uh, they, assimilate, they assumed in this country called Rwanda, that now people who are speaking that language, they are Banyarwanda. They are not. They are not Banyarwanda. Those are the Hutus of Congo. And initially Hutus came from Congo. Hutus never came from Rwanda. Hutus came from Congo. If there is a Hutu who left Rwanda and went to Congo in the recent time, he went back to home. Initially, they had come from Congo to Rwanda. And then when they found there is a lot of animosity and hatred and genocide in Rwanda, they decided, let's go back to where we came from. And they went back home. If there is a Hutu who just recently left Burundi and decided to go back to Congo, it's not that the Hutu left Burundi to go to Congo. It is a Hutu who was in Burundi and decided, you know what, let me go back to where my ancestors came from. And their ancestors had come from Congo. Because initially, the Hutus, if you ask them, they had come from Cameroon and Central African Republic. This region of Bangui is where the early Hutus used to live. They migrated through Kisangani and came to this part. Right? And then they continued on. Some went to Uganda, Burundi, others ended, ended up in Tanzania. But then they decided, some of them today are deciding to go back to where they came from. And that's why a lot of Hutus who left the genocide in Rwanda went as far as Cameroon. Ask people in Cameroon how many Hutu who came there in between 1996 and 2001 uh, escaping the genocide in Rwanda. They will tell you millions of them are in Cameroon today. 
And they never went to Cameroon as foreigners. They went where their ancestors had come from. So we have to also agree on that. So, so I like telling people history because the history is all over the place. People refuse to read. People refuse to ask questions. People want to tell me that a community is, that is called Hutu, they speak Kinyarwanda. What is that? And the name Kinyarwanda was never there before the 1920. It was never there. It came by the Muzungu. The white person came and made it. And now you want to tell me that people who have been speaking the same language a thousand years before the colonizers came, they were speaking Kinyarwanda. What language, what did they call their, their language? They called it Kihutu because they are Hutus. And the same language, did it die or is it still there? It's still there. So why is it being called Kinyarwanda? Because of lies. The Tutsis are trying to lie. Now, another thing. If we agree that all this territory has so many Hutus, then we expect that the names of the part, these regions are named in Kihutu, right? Yes. So Bukavu is a Hutu word. Ijgui, the island in the Kivu, is a Hutu word. Kivu itself is a Hutu word, meaning ash. Kivu means ash. In Swahili, we say Jivu. In Kihutu, they say Kivu. Now, actually, the Hutus call it Ivu. They don't say Jiv. They call it Ivu. You remove the K. You say Ivu, meaning Ash. So, the reason being this region is called Kivu is because of Mount Niragongo. Mount Niragongo is a volcanic mountain that now and then explodes, emitting and spewing ash all over this territory. Some of that ash even finds its way into the lake. So the lake is Lake Ash because of the mountain. So this territory is called Kivu, South and North Kivu, because of the Hutus. They named it Kivu from their word of Ash. Now, because the Tutsis came to Rwanda, they adopted the Hutu language. They've been using that to justify that the Masisi territory belongs to the Tutsis because even the word Masisi is a Kinyarwanda. Bro, bro, the word Masisi is a Kihutu. Bro, the word Bihamge is a Hutu. Bro, Bihamge sounds like Biharamuro. In Tanzania, let me show you Biharamuro. Where is Bih you Notice this territory is called Bihamge. It is the town as you go to Rubaya, Bihamge. So Rubaya is there south of Bihamge. Now, if you go to Tanzania, you'll find similar names like Biharamuro. Because the people who live there are the Tanzanian Hutus. The ones I was saying, they are called the Ha. So now the Tutsis in Rwanda, they've been trying to say that even Kivu is Kinyarwanda. No, Kivu is Kihutu boss. And even Bihamge is Kinyarwanda. Bihamge is Kihutu boss. But even Bukavu is the word of Kinyarwanda. No, Bukavu is Kihutu boss. Because if you continue saying that, you're going to even go to Burundi and start saying Gitega is Kinyarwanda, Gitega is Kihutu. You start saying Bujumbura is Kinyarwanda. Bujumbura is a Kihutu word, boss. Do you know what Bujumbura means? Now, in the Kihutu, when you they would put potatoes, sweet potatoes, because they, they never used to have potatoes before the po po Portuguese came with that. So they used to have the red sweet potato, which is African. And they would roast it, they would cook it either in a pot, you put the potatoes, you put water, you put some leaves, and then you cover it with like hot ash. So you're cooking it from below, and you're also kind of cooking it from above. And basically, you're like, uh, what do we call it, doing an oven, and you are like baking the sweet potato. And to know whether it is cooked, you would ask someone to take a stick to go and pull out one of the potatoes, the sweet potato. And that action of pulling out the sweet potato from hot ash or hot oven to find out whether it's cooked is called kujumbura. 
which is now where the word Bujumbura came from. It means the people of this region used to do a lot of uh, oven cooking or something. But now you understand, it's a Hutu word. And now, as I was saying, if you go to Tanzania, the eastern part, this part, these names that are Hutus, like Biharamuro and Bihamge, they are the same. And you ask people who live here, they are called Baha. Biharamuro is so close to, Tanz- to Rwanda and Tanzania, the people who live here are the Hutus. And that's why they name this part Biharamuro. Uh, you, they name this part uh, Nyakahura, uh, Nyakanyazi, Nyakatara. Uh, and if you go to you go, you go to Congo, you'll find Nyaka Nying, a lot of Nyaka things, Nyaka names, because those are Hutus. And Rwanda should stop saying that. The Tutsis are Congolese because Masisi is a Kenya Rwanda word. Bro. I said Masisi is a Kihutu word and there is a lot of Hutus in Congo, the Nyatura people and so many of them and you are trying to go there to displace them from their ancestors' land by claiming that that, that land belongs to the Tutsi. And it's a big lie. 